Our story begins with the city of Mecca. It is said that when Adam and Eve were first expelled from paradise, the two were separated. With Eve having landed near the city of Mecca, and Adam having landed somewhere in the Far East. After many years of searching for one another, Adam finally managed to make his way down through the Arabian Peninsula to Mecca. And it was at the top of Mount Arafat, just outside the city of Mecca, where the two were finally reunited. Mecca is also significant because it is considered the first place on earth that God Almighty was worshipped alone. And so, it was at that very spot that Abraham and his son Ishmael built the first house of worship for God. In honor of this, God Almighty had built in the heavens a similar structure for the angels. And it is said that every day, 70,000 angels come to that building to perform their prayers and then leave, intending never to return again. When Abraham and Ishmael had finished building the sacred house, there was still one brick that had to be put in its place. And so, Abraham sent his son Ishmael off to find a unique stone that he could put there. But God Almighty destined that the final stone that was to be laid would not be from the material of this world, but instead a stone directly from the heart of paradise. The angel Gabriel then brought the stone down to Abraham, who proceeded to put it in its proper place. It is said that when the stone first came down, it was a pure white color. But due to the impurities of this world and the sinfulness of man, the stone slowly began to fade and eventually turned black. As time passed, the city began to develop, with the people of Mecca remaining upon pure monotheism, worshipping one god alone. This despite the fact that their neighbors in Egypt, Mesopotamia, and the Levant had been practicing paganism for centuries. But this was all the change when a merchant by the name of Amr ibn Nuhay had decided to conduct his business outside of Mecca. Amr then proceeded to journey northwards until he reached the lands of Levant. There, Amr would witness for the first time things like modern architecture, advanced literature, and of course, the practice of paganism. Amr was so impressed by all that he had seen, that before leaving, he asked if he could take one of the idols back home with him. The people agreed, and so Amr took the idol and placed it along with the other goods and merchandise in his caravan. He then set out southwards, back towards the city of Mecca. When Amru arrived back home, he immediately took the idol and placed it right in front of the sacred house. He then proceeded to tell the people that this was now going to be the god that they worship. Sadly, this concept faced little if no resistance. And as time passed, the people began to worship more and more different idols. Until it is said by the end of the 6th century, there were over 360 different idols surrounding the sacred house in Mecca. As the years passed, and paganism became more prominent throughout the world, the people who still practiced monotheism knew that the coming of a new prophet was close at hand. And so, either through deductive reasoning, or through interpretation of their holy text, Many had concluded that the Arabian Peninsula was the most probable place God would send his new prophet. For at the time, the Roman Empire and the Persian Empire had extremely repressive governments and were hostile towards any type of rebellion, be it ideologically or politically. While the Arabian Peninsula, on the other hand, though also deeply mired in paganism, was a land ruled by tribal law and never had a real central government. As time went by, 
It appears that more and more people began to move down to the Arabian Peninsula to await the coming of the next prophet. And so, in the very land in which man first worshipped his creator, and where Abraham built the first house of worship for God alone, it was there where God had destined his last and final messenger would emerge. <laughs>